Hi, I'm going to talk to you about finding the surface area of this travel little prism. And um, it's been a long time trying to find a video telling, teaching you what I wanted to say. So I just decided instead I would just make it myself. So this trapezoidal prism is um, laying on its side. I know that because the base of a trapezoidal prism would be a trapezoid. So this uh, face that's right here on the back is actually, I could think of that as like the top. And I could think of this base right here that's facing me um, as the bottom. And then it's just kind of laying down. And so I went over that to kind of help you visualize and I made them yellow. So um, if I'm going to find the surface area, the surface area is the area of all the faces added together. And I know um, I could do that by making a net and I could create a net and I could imagine that I was taking, I'm gonna kind of imagine like I have a pair of scissors and I'm gonna cut here. Let's see if I could cut this, I could cut right here. And then I could cut down this way and down this way and then cut along these. And what would happen and cut down here and cut down here and I would cut along them and I could open and cut down this way and I could open them up and I would lay them out and I would know that this right here would be a rectangle and that rectangle would be attached to this rectangle here, which would be attached to this rectangle back here, and be attached to the rectangle that is on the top here. And that would be the make up the lateral faces. And those lateral faces wrap around the base. They go around the base. Okay. So um, now if I think about that, those lateral faces are wrapping around the base. So what else goes around the base? Well, the perimeter goes around the base. So if I look at these lateral faces, and I'm sorry for all my coloring, hold on a second. If I look at these lateral faces and I think about it, if I cut them, then what they would do is they would make one rectangle, one big rectangle that would go around it. So this is all one big rectangle wrapping around the trapezoids. So a rectangle is easy to find the area of, right? So this right here, this lateral face would be like a rectangle. It would, be, it would come out like this, okay, it would be a rectangle. And what would the dimensions of that rectangle be? So that rectangle would kind of, so I'm going to take this rectangle that goes around it. It's going to go, I'm going to cut it off. And I'm going to cut it up the, this way and I'm going to cut around so that it unfolds. And when it does, it's going to come out this way right? This is the part that wrapped around the trapezoid. And then this is the part that's uh, this side here. Okay, that's this side. And then this is the other part that wrapped around the trapezoid. And then this is the other, this is like the other part of that side that was wrapped together. So this went around the trapezoid. So it's folded here. It's folded like, there's five, wait, a five here. Okay. And then it's unfolded and here's the top part, this, this, this top part here. So there's also five, okay? And then there is, um, oops, no, oops, my bad, I didn't want to undo that, hold on. Okay, there's this, so this five, good, five. And then um, I'll erase this check mark. And now I have this back face here, that's this and this. Well, this right here, is hmm I know it's four I think oh it's it's four you see four so that makes this one here do a little bit smaller and that's this back this back part and it's four which leaves the one left the one part left which is down here it's the thing that's on the bottom here which is eight okay so there we go we unwrapped this trapezoid and now we have this at the bottom the, the five, which is, um, let's see this five here, this, this five, and then this top five, and then this four and the eight. And that went around. Well, that's the same thing. If you look at this trapezoid, that's the same thing as this trapezoid's perimeter because it has a side that's um, five and five more and four and eight. So these numbers are the edges of the trapezoid. So that 
adding them together is just going to give me the trapezoid's perimeter. Trapezoid's perimeter, okay? So that would be, what is that, uh, 22? So the perimeter is 22. And then this other side here, so it's just 22. The other side is this 12. Because all around the trapezoid, the trapezoids, how far apart are they? They, they are 12 units apart. So that's really the height of the prism. So to find the area, this lateral area, I'm just gonna multiply 22 times 12. So that's gonna give me 264 units squared. Now, if you don't believe me, do you, do you hear her yell? Lex is talking to me. Anyway, if you didn't believe me, think about it. This right here, this face was five times 12, which is 60. This top face here is five times 12, which is 60. This back face is four times 12, which is 48. And the bottom face is eight times 12, and eight times 12 is 96. So when I add those all together, I would get 120, uh, 168, and 168 plus 96. Yep, yeah, there you go. I would add them together and I would get 264. So that's the same area. So by finding the perimeter of the trapezoid and multiplying it by the height of the prism, that's going to give me this lateral area. So is that the total surface area? Well, no, because I forgot not only do I have the lateral areas, but I also have the area of the base. But I know how to find the area of the base because the base is a trapezoid. So to find the area of a trapezoid, I'm gonna do um, a half. Oh, that's ugly. Oh, see, a half times the height of the trapezoid times the two bases added together. And that'll give me the area of the base, which is gonna be 26. And then the area of the top is gonna to be the same thing, right? It's gonna be a half times the height times the sum of the bases, five plus eight. Well, that's the same thing as the front. That's also gonna be 26. So I'm gonna add those two things together. Well, that means I'm gonna just take the area of the base, which is B, I'm gonna call that B, and I'm gonna double it because there's two of them. So there you go. That's how you find surface area. You take the area of the base and you double it because there's two of them. So like two times 26 plus, and then we found the perimeter, which was 22 times the height of the prism, which is 12. And that was 264. And then you're just gonna add those two things together and that will give you the total surface area. You might say to yourself, wait, that's a lot of work. It was a lot of work, but what it does is it keeps us from having to make nets. So there, what makes this a little bit better is that by doing this problem, by doing it this way and using the formula, we, it's still really difficult, but at least you don't have to make a net of a trapezoidal prism too. So it was 316 units squared is the messy area of this trapezoid. Thanks.